Hello friends, once again welcome to my channel. So in today's video we will see multiple CPU organization. Last video we, were, we have discussed so many examples for your various uh, addressing mode instructions uh, that uh, how to write the control sequence. And today we will see multiple CPU organization. So in multiple CPU organization there will be more than one bus will be there. Previously, we have got only single bus. Only over a single set of wires, we have connected the small, small components belonging to your CPU. Now, what we will do? We are having here three set of wires. That is, three set of buses are there. Whenever more than one bus is there to connect the components of CPU, we used to call it as a multi-bus CPU organization. In our case, it is three-bus CPU architecture. And the first bus is called as bus A, bus B, and bus C. There is nothing called uh, why that what is the, why the name is A, B, and C. These are some names of buses A, B, and C, right? And we have that internal components present here. The first component very well known to us is program counter. So program counter content can be placed on bus B. This is the design, right? We need to understand the design. Based on the design, next our job will be to write the control sequence for various instructions. So first we'll see the design. So PC, program counter is connected. See here program counter output can be given to bus B and new value can be loaded into program counter from bus C, right? And here one more difference is there as compared to our previous discussion on single bus CPU organization is that here to increment the value of PC, we are not going to ALU. Here we have connected our component called incrementer. Incrementer is internally connected to PC. So whatever is the value of PC is uh, been given to incrementer and then incrementer will do the increment operation and the results will be given back. So always the content of PC is connected to incrementer, right? So see, it is not the case that always PC content will be incremented. We need to enable the incrementer. When we enable the incrementer, whatever is there on its input, that will be incremented and the incremented value will be given back to the PC. This is how it works. Then next it comes your register file. Here we are um, having our registers as a single file due to the advancement in VLSI technology. As a single file, we are implementing our general purpose registers those we used to call as R0, R1, R up to R and minus 1. So from this, in this register file, we have got three connections, three ports. Two ports are for output, one port, one port is for input. In the same clock cycle, from this register file, from two registers, content can be placed onto the bus A and B. On these two buses, we can place the content. And at the same time, from bus C to another register or to a register, we can place the content of bus C. These three communication can take place at the same time in the same clock cycle. Why three communications can take place in the same cycle? Because here there are three paths are there. So if there are three set of wires are there, on three set of wires, we can do three communications simultaneously. This far is done. Then next comes your ALU. ALU mostly performs binary operation, so it requires two input. Two input comes from bus B and bus A. So now already I have told you that uh, PC will be not incremented through ALU. It will be incremented via this um, component incrementer. Then our biggest doubt will come that okay, bus A content need to be connected to A input of the ALU, right? Then why this multiplexer is there? Why this constant 4 is there? They are still there because sometimes we perform some instructions where we are communicating with conjugative memory locations. For example, you might have seen before while I've discussed stack, load multiple. This is single mnemonic, right? Load multiple, store multiple. So whenever we perform this, that time what happens? That from your store multiple will take a set of register values and it will put in memory locations in conjugative, right? So suppose this location is 1000, this is 1004, 
this is thousand eight. So in the same instruction, we require to increment the content of your memory locations. So for those type of instructions to support communication with uh, consecutive memory locations via single instruction, we require constant four. Please understand this properly. Still, constant four is there. Whereas we are not going to use it for incrementing the value of PC, rather to support some other type of instructions where we need to increment or decrement the content of memory locations they which are there in consecutive in memory right so that time we will be using this constant 4 right so constant 4 is connected to multiplexer as well as content of bus a is also connected to multiplexer here though we have not shown here one select line is there depending on the value of select line whether i am selecting a or selecting 4 Based on that, one of the two input will be given to the ALU's A input. So whenever the two inputs are available on your ALU, then the signals are given to perform the operation like add, jot, nand, not, whatever operation. Sorry, not is a single operation, means uh, unary operation. But So we'll give the signal to perform the operation and then operation will be performed and result will be placed on bus C. So see here the beauty of this single multiple CPU organization is that in the same clock cycle you can put the two operands to your ALU in two different buses and in the same clock cycle by the end of the clock cycle result will be placed on bus C. So to do your ALU operation only a single uh, clock cycle is required whereas in our single bus CPU organization we require three. In one clock cycle, we'll put the operand in Y register. Then another operand will put on the bus, will be available to the B input. Then we'll perform the operation. Then we we'll get the result in Z in. In the next clock cycle only, Z out and the result will go to the destination. This is how we were doing there. This was only because there was a single bus. But now we have got three buses. So two inputs and one output can be placed on three buses simultaneously or I should say in the same clock cycle. In the beginning of the clock cycle, these two inputs will be fed to your ALU. Operation will be performed and then the result will be placed onto bus C by the end of the clock cycle. Hope this part is understood. One more thing I would like to mention here. Uh, okay, I'll come to that. Before that, I'll explain IR. IR is your instruction register. So if I want to uh, send the... Uh, whatever is brought from memory is there in MDR from M if it happens to be instruction I need to give it to IR there is no direct connection between MDR and IR so to give the content of MDR somehow I need to place that content on bus C then only it can be given to IR register we'll see how to do it and then the next one is MDR and IR is connected to the decoder. Decoder's output can be placed on bus A. And uh, next one is MDR. MDR is having two connections for your output. That means bus A and bus B. Bus A and bus B both can take the output of MDR and new value into MDR can come from bus C. This is also there. So see, whenever MDR can place its content on bus A and B, then whenever we perform MDR out, we need to mention whether it is bus A or bus B. So if it is MDR, uh, MDR out A, that means MDR's content is placed on bus A. If it is B, then MDR out B like this. And see, this arrow represents connection with memory chip. This here memory chip is there. So memory chip will have one connection for address coming to the memory and data lines are bidirectional. That is connected to MDR. Whatever operation you perform, if something is coming from memory as a data, that has to go to MDR only. From there, we can reroute it. Means we can send to the particular register or wherever we need to. And MAR is the only one who can give address to the memory. Whenever you want to perform any read or write, only MAR can give you the address to the memory. And MAR into MAR we can place the content via bus C only. So whenever you need to load something into MAR, 
that time we have to put the content on bus c then only mar can be loaded so here though i have told you that from where to where the values will come and these lines are uh, meant for connecting with the memory module right so see basically we know whenever we will fetch one instruction from memory that time pc content need to be transferred to mar that we know that is our first basic operation we need to perform so with pc there is no direct connection of mr this is one another one is pc can place his content on bus b whereas mr can take input from bus c only then how to do the transfer for that for our rescue alu is there what we will do we will do pc out pc out meaning is the content will be placed on bus b only right and then uh, data is there on bus b that address is there on bus b somehow from bus b i need to transfer it to bus c then only it can be given to mar so for that what we will do whatever is there on bus b i will that is connected to the b input of the alu because whatever is there on the bus that is actually connected to your b input of the alu that is there here you need not have to do b in or something like that so simply it is there on input of alu then what we will write r equal to b that means we are setting that output of alu equal to the b input of the alu that means this content is placed here once it is placed here that means it is connected to bus c this is how we are transferring the content of bus b to bus c and that is our basic operation required once we do r equal to b that means content will come to bus c then we can do mar in so in this way we can transfer the content of either bus a or bus b to bus c because some connections are coming from bus uh, c only whereas data is are placed on a or b bus so from there we need to transfer to c then only to a particular register we can enter the value same thing will be applicable for ir because ir will take the instruction instruction will come in mdr mdr can place the value on bus b or bus a but it has to be loaded through bus c so that time also we are going to use the same technique once again here i will would like to repeat that why this constant 4 is still present though incremented is there the reason behind is uh, to support load multiple store multiple type of instructions where in the single instruction we communicate with consecutive memory locations and each data is staying four bytes apart from the previous one so that time this four will be used to update the content of memory location to point to the next element in the list so this much is there for your understanding the multiple bus cpu organization in the next video we will see how to write control sequence for an instruction using this particular organization so till then thank you and if you are getting from my Ex uh, explanations then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you